This week I've been driving the new 2022 Audi S3 and I figured tonight would be a great opportunity to give you guys some first impressions on what it's been like to live with this vehicle for the last few days. We've got a light dusting of snow, we're on winter tires, let's do a POV night drive. Just a quick walk around on this, we have a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder, makes 306 horsepower, that's mated to a 7 speed dual clutch transmission. We have 19 inch wheels with 235 35R19 tires, very skinny sidewalls, got to be super careful about potholes tonight. Really nice headlights, love this gray, proper looking sport sedan, slightly smaller trunk space, slightly larger interior cabin this year for the 22 S3. I've actually been really excited to drive this because we most recently drove the Golf R. I'm very curious to see how this compares. Interestingly enough, this does not quite have the same rear differential situation as the Golf R. It's the old school Haldex. So we don't have drift mode. The RS3 gets all of that fun stuff. And the S3 takes a little bit more of a traditional quattro all-wheel drive approach. Love the interior lighting. You can see we've got quite a bit of space in the rear here. A little bit of an improvement from the previous generation A3 S3. I'm a big fan of what Audi's doing these days with their interiors. Look at this door handle. Such a cool element. Really neat design on the door panels. Bang & Olufsen sound system. We've got a nice touch screen right here. But unlike the Golf R, we have physical buttons and controls for climate control. We even have kind of a volume swiping situation down here with a track selection and a mute button. Same little tiny shifter, little electronic parking brake down below here. A very simple, functional, and usable cabin. My only complaint with this interior, and this really comes up in night driving, is that there's no quick access that I can find for the dimmer switch. You want to dim these displays, make them a little bit darker. That's really quite difficult. You have to go into settings display and brightness, and there's your dimmer. So if you're just driving around at night and you want to quickly dim the display or adjust it near sunrise, sunset time, that's a few clicks in the menu, which I think is a little bit, I don't know, a little bit silly. Not my favorite thing about this Audi, but otherwise we've got a pretty nice interior here. Audi's doing a great job with their seats, with their materials, a little bit of carbon fiber like weave on the dash. You can change this ambient lighting to a bunch of different colors if you so choose. Love the little clicks that you get from the touch screen. Um, overall, I really do like this car quite a bit. Show you guys what the reverse camera looks like. <laughs> Can't see too much today with the snow all over the rear end. All right, let's, uh, let's turn some things off here and go for a nice spirited snow drive. We'll put us into dynamic mode. Get a little bit more exhaust note, and we'll turn off the interior lighting. Gotta love Quattro all-wheel drive. It is so fluid and so capable in snowy conditions like we have tonight. <laughs> Still appreciate that the uh, traction and stability control system let us play around just a little bit. dual clutch is fantastic. Apologies for the uh, noise from the windshield wipers. I think I actually like this dual clutch better than what was in the Golf R a couple weeks ago. It's a little bit snappier. Paddles seem to be slightly more responsive. 
pricing on this S3 is interesting because it starts about the same price as the Golf R, $45,000. This mid trim starts at around $50,000, and as tested, it's about 55 grand. But it feels like such a nice button down, dialed in car. As a daily, honestly, I'm kind of swinging towards this S3 over the Golf R in some respects. Makes a good sound too. Almost sounds like a five song. It's a really throaty, low, guttural two liter turbo. here. Get some subtle burbles from the exhaust there on downshifts. I only have two complaints about this car. The dimmer switch situation that I pointed out in the beginning of the video is a little bit annoying. And these 19 inch wheels are absolutely brutal to drive on, on less than ideal roads. Our Michigan roads recently have had some of the biggest potholes I've ever seen. And I already <laughs> didn't get this car last week because it hit a pothole about a mile from the office when it left. And, uh, busted a rim, busted a tire. In Germany, the Autobahn is perfect. That's not the case everywhere else. It would be nice to get just a little bit more sidewall in a car like this. And every pothole you do hit is a super cringe-worthy moment. It really resonates through the cabin and uh, Ugh, it's painful. It's really stressful to drive this thing at night or uh, with limited visibility. It's interesting too because we just drove the BMW M240i. That's an all-wheel drive, $50,000, $55,000 sports coupe. Granted, that only has two doors and this has four. Which do I prefer? That's a tough one because this S3 is really fun to drive. But that M240i, that is one of the best BMWs I've driven under $60,000, $70,000 in a long time. It kind of strikes the perfect balance between comfortable and daily driver friendly and this s3 also does a really good job with that i think i don't know honestly i'm leaning a little bit more towards this s3 just because dynamically it's a little bit more engaging it's a little bit sharper whereas that m240i was a little numb the m240i is definitely quicker that inline six is a sweetheart but this S3 is a really close competitor, and it kind of comes down to personal preference. Do you need four doors out of your daily driver, or can you get away with a coupe configuration? Personally, I wouldn't be able to own the M240i because I just can't get a car seat in the back, but this S3 kind of solves that problem for me. But that said, it's great to have those two options in the segment right now. I realize that isn't necessarily a direct competitor to this S3, but it's probably a vehicle that will be cross-shopping with something like this. Again, apologies for all the wiper noise in tonight's video. Pretty much all I can do to keep the windshield from icing up. It's sleeting, raining, kind of an icy mix, and uh, I definitely want to be able to see out of this thing. So, what else? Apple CarPlay, wireless functionality. This week it's been pretty good, but for some reason my Siri voice activation hasn't been working 
and uh, it's almost like the car can't quite hear what I'm telling it uh, in within Apple CarPlay. So not sure if that's an Apple CarPlay issue or if that is a uh, Audi issue. I'm thinking it's more an Audi issue because the other press vehicle that I have this week works just fine. Oh yeah, everything's icing up. High beam assist, having issues. Just a wonderful car to slide around in the snow. It's so predictable, it's so easy. <laughs> All of our safety systems are getting iced up. Okay, so this versus the Golf R, I would have the S3 because ultimately, at the limit, in the snow, they drive about the same. I think the S3 might be a little bit more predictable. And to be honest, I think drift mode in the Golf R is fun, but it's a little bit of a gimmick. It just overdrives that outside rear wheel. And in performance driving scenarios, it's not ideal because it's a little bit unpredictable. I found that when I was ice racing the Golf R, it would spin quite often. <laughs> <laughs> in drift mode compared to just the standard all-wheel drive mode. The hall decks in this S3 is super well dialed in and the comforts and luxuries and usability of the rest of this car, I think this S3 drives better than the Golf R. It feels higher quality and for around the same price, this is just a much nicer higher-end daily driver. Um, there are some advantages to having a hatchback, I think, too. The Golf R solves that. This S3 isn't as usable of a packaging solution for an everyday driver, but I think the driving experience here is well worth it over the Golf R. And for some of the markups that I've been seeing on Golf R's recently, $55,000, that's what this S3 costs. And uh, something to consider, something to think about for sure. Even with this being an entry level, lower end price point for an S model, this interior, the feel of this car, it's as nice as Audi's really high-end stuff. We had an Audi RS e-tron GT a few months ago, and this interior is not far off. We're missing a few carbon fiber bits, but the feel of everything, the fit, the finish, uh, the quality of all the switch gear, it's all there. It all matches up in a car that is a third of the price, which is pretty amazing. I like seeing Audi do that. It's very similar to what BMW is doing with the new M240i. Um, boy, we are just completely icing up here. This is a difficult, difficult drive tonight to keep clean. We've got the defrost blasting, and we're still having trouble. Yeah, this DSG tuning is really good. Definitely more responsive than the Golf R's. The paddle shifters are just tack sharp. I love the way this two liter turbo sounds. And we are sheer ice right now, spinning all four wheels in fourth gear on the highway. Yikes. Really starting to enjoy this car after spending some time with it. It is a fun, fun little package. And uh, finally, I think a nice practical option as an alternative to an S4. I think uh, the size here is a real advantage. It just, it drives so well. The S4 is getting a little bit big these days, a little bit heavy. And this S3 just strikes a really nice balance in my opinion. Just lovely. There's a pothole. There we go. We missed it. <laughs> so much fun. And left to its own devices, the auto programming in sport mode 
does a pretty good job too. That's actually a pretty nice mode for winter driving because it keeps the revs high and allows you to downshift when you're slowing down and you don't really have to use the brakes as much when driving this in the snow. Let's turn traction control back on and see how it reacts in the snow with everything on. Limiting us on a start off the line. There we go, we just needed to really blast that windscreen with heat. That's doing the job. Just a little bit of brake torque vectoring, getting us rotated around tighter corners. That works about how I expected it to. Honestly though, left to its own devices with electronic stability control off, I can still feel a little bit of intervention, but it's only on off-throttle turn-in situations, just to get that front end turned in into the corner. This is a really progressive, easy car to drive in the snow. Gotta love Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive systems. cluster views here this fully digital dash we can see just information overload or this more simplified display I like the rev counter in this too it's not the sillier rev counter that the uh, RS products have I think this is just a little bit more I don't know normal looking snow on these winter tires. What a joy. I like the cruise control in this car too. It skips in two and a half mile an hour increments. So it goes from 60 to 62.5 and then up from there to 65. Really interesting. Actually kind of nice because you only have to double press it to go five miles an hour can hold for really fast increases or decreases. Once you get used to it, it's a very intuitive system to use. It's a physical control down below the steering wheel, very similar to what Audi's used for quite a while on their cars. You pull it forward to engage it, you push it back to disengage. Set the speed by pushing the button in. You can turn the whole system off very easily just by pushing it all the way forward. shift automatically in manual mode, which some may like, others may not. <laughs> this S3 is just a blast to drive in manual mode. You just get so much control over the transmission and the gearbox. <laughs> the seven speed dual clutch. Oh, let's 
pop shift exhausts are pretty loud under that overpass. I feel like the exhaust is a little bit more muted on the interior of this car, and from the outside it probably sounds pretty mean. Alright guys, well hopefully this has given you a pretty good idea of what it's like to drive the S3 at night and in the snow. Uh, just a light dusting, but enough to have a little bit of fun tonight. Great car overall. Uh, really liking this thing this week. Aside from those couple complaints, uh, this is a solid, solid offering from Audi. And uh, really nice to get back into some Audis. It's been a while since we've driven any of their vehicles, any S3, S4, S5s. And uh, I've been really excited about this new S3 because I've been really excited about the new RS3. And I wanted to see what this mid-trim uh, feels like and is, is to experience. The RS3 is going to be absolutely bonkers and uh, just a really, really nice package. But as it sits, you don't want to swing the $60,000 for an RS3. This S3 is just a fantastic option. Super fun. I'd take it over a Golf R and um, yeah, just watch out for potholes. Man, scary stuff. <laughs> Alright guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. We'll just park it right here. Awesome. Your mobile device is still in the vehicle.